All right. Good morning, everyone. Oh, it's good to have everybody here at this time. 10.30 service is different, isn't it? Yes. Uh, yes. Yes, I will. Yes, I will. Amen. Amen. All right. Well, what we're going to be talking about today is uh, something that is a little bit more kind of character building today. Um, and since this is the summer period, you know, I decided to wear something summery today. You know, my wife, wife joined me in the summeriness as well. Yeah, she, she, was, she was just saying to me in the car, oh, so you like, so you like colors. Okay, you like yellow stuff. And I was, I was just like, yes, I do, but please, babe. I, I don't want no, you know, yellow aluminous suits or anything like that, you know. Have me looking like a radioactive lemon or something like that. It's crazy, 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 crazy. But yes, so um, what we're going to be talking about is renewing our minds. So the title of the message is uh, Extreme Makeover. Extreme Makeover. Um, I don't know if any of you remember the, the show that was in the early 2000s called the Extreme Makeover. It's the home edition where they would um, basically have seven days to just completely renovate a, a whole house. On occasions, sometimes they literally blow up the whole house and start from the foundation and literally build a brand new house. Now, you know, though the, though the, uh, the renovations were extreme, it always caused a massive transformation in the lives of the people. And it was, it was such a great change in their lives. And see, uh, what I want us to grab a hold of is that first and foremost, God has already done an extreme makeover in our own lives personally. See, through the death, burial, and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ and us putting our faith, putting our trust in him, he starts off the process of the extreme makeover, that he rejuvenate, that he replenishes, that he restores, and that he renovates our whole lives. But one thing that is important for us to understand is that sometimes when, when many of us um, receive Christ as our Lord, you know, for some of us, we experience, you know, the goosebumps and all the feelings and and certain things may change almost instantly for, for some of us. Others, it just might feel like, okay, thank you, Jesus. You know, it, it might not be as emotional in, it, in its expression. And, but some of us may look at those whose um, experience might be emotional and everything, I think, and wonder oh, gosh, uh, uh, is that how I'm supposed to be? Is that how I'm supposed to be? Is that what being saved is like, you know? You know, uh, why am I not feeling this way? You know, and see, here's the, the beautiful thing is, is that none of the salvation is based upon our performance or what we do. It is based upon what Jesus has done. And it is based upon us standing in his grace and his mercy. But then why is it that it seems like the, the walk seems a little challenging at times? You know, you, you get saved and sometimes at the beginning it seems like everything is just falls into place. You can just open up your Bible and you have just got a scripture saying, I love you with an everlasting, I literally have that scripture, wow, <laughs> yes, thank you, Lord, thank you, Lord, hey, love you with an everlasting, thank you, Lord, thank you, thank you, I need that, I needed that, I needed that, see, those moments, get these moments, other times, you could turn into your Bible and say, Repent, you wicked sinner. <laughs> well, I was having a great day. <laughs> you know, and, and besides that, 
Everything else in the world can come across as very challenging. The things that are going on in our world right now, if we look in terms of what's going on in the media and everything like that, you know, it can seem like a lot of very challenging times. But within all of that, God has a particular thing that he urges for us to do. See, in the book of Romans, the book of Romans is a powerful book, powerful book. Romans chapter 12, God through the apostle Paul has to put before us an urgent appeal. So Romans chapter 12, from verse 1 to 2. And it says, I appeal to you, therefore, brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Do not be conformed to this world but be transformed by the renewing. Everybody say renewing. Renewing. Say it again. One more time. Thank you. Renewing of the mind. That That by testing, you may discern what is the will of God and what is good and acceptable and perfect. Because the will of God is good and it is acceptable and it is perfect. The will of God. What do we mean when we say the will of God? Well, the will of God, quite literally, is the word of God. This itself is the will and testament of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. When he passed away, he left us an inheritance, but we know that he didn't stay. As he rose again, he brought us powerful things. And Romans is a powerful book in regards to showing us the the power of our salvation, and the grace and the mercy in which we stand in. And so in the context of this, uh, looking at verse 1 again, we're just going to dissect it and break it down here. See, there's a reason why I I chose the term extreme makeover. And we're going to get into that. It says, once again, I appeal to you, therefore. What's the therefore? Therefore. Well, in the context, he's talking about us as believers standing in the grace and the mercy of God. Just as I said earlier on, it is not by our performance or what we have done, but it's purely by what Christ has done. And so what he goes on to say here is that by these very mercies of God, that we are to present our bodies as a living sacrifice. That is a very powerful, can come across a bit unusual. But when he talks about presenting your body to God, see, the the idea is that we come before God and we are fixing our eyes now upon God and we are presenting everything to him. And so the focus is this, that for us, we fix our minds upon whatever God wants us to do. And from that moment in time, it doesn't matter what anybody else thinks. It doesn't matter what the the world says. It doesn't even matter what we say or what we think. But what it matters is what Christ thinks. See, back in the day, I used to work as a a grill chef. I don't do too much grilling nowadays, but as my wife will testify. But yeah, so I used to work in uh, one of those wonderful... Uh, 
grill chef places and stuff. And um, I used to be a, um, I started off as, they used to have a number one chef and they used to have a number two chef. And so I started off as a number two. And then, so I was doing, you know, all, all the stuff that the number two chef would do. But then I started to do some of the, the stuff that the number one chef was doing. And then I started to realize I was doing a lot more, more and more and more what the number one chef should be doing. And so, and so I was thinking, okay, I'm learning, but so I'm pretty much doing what the number one chef is doing. But I ain't getting paid. <laughs> number one chef, pay. You know, what's, what's up with this? And so, and so I, I, spoke to, I spoke to one of like the, you know, the, uh, deputy managers, and I was, I was like, I'm doing, I'm doing all this, but I'm pretty much doing everything here. You know, I think, I think I need to be, you know, review about, you know, the money. <laughs> you know, cash. And so the deputy just basically told me that, well, um, you know, that's, that's nice and everything, but at the end of the day, what, what matters is what the, the manager says. So so what I realized is that regardless of what I thought, or regardless of whatever the deputy said, it was about what the manager said. It was about what, how he viewed everything. And so I had to submit to management. And so it's important for us to live our lives according to our management. Amen? And so this is a very important perspective for us to start off with. And so as we focus once again, so as we said, I appeal to you, brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your spiritual worship. I just want to focus on that for a moment, where it says spiritual worship. You know, in the, in the original language, that the word there for the, the spiritual worship, it's, it's where we get our word logic from. And um, this is specifically speaking about this is the most logical way to worship God. This is the most accurate way to worship God. And, and that way is first and foremost to present your, your bodies as a living sacrifice. That, that, that within itself is where things get a bit weird because it's literally talking about the walking dead. Okay, not literally, well, not zombies. Don't, don't, don't start thinking zombies. For those of you that are aware of that, for those of you that don't know what I'm talking about, uh, be oblivious. It's fine. It's fine. But the, the language is this picture of that, you know, in the Old Testament, they used to have, bring sacrifices onto the, onto the Lord. And these things, they would literally be what they call a burnt offering. And so these things would, they would, they'd bring it onto the Lord, and it would be pleasing to God. And so the idea is this. I'm going to have to break this one down. I'm going to go into Scripture again. We're going to go to 1 Thessalonians. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. If you know me, I'm going to go into the scripture because I don't want to just give you my opinion and stuff. I, I want to give you what the word of God says. I want you to know what God is saying. And so that if, you know, if you have an issue, you can take it up with God, you know. <laughs> that's, that's my out. <laughs> oh, hopefully it'll be up on the screen. But um, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. And going to look at verse, verse 23. It says, Now may the God of peace himself sanctify you completely. 
and may your whole spirit and soul and body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. He who calls you is faithful and he will surely do it. Amen. See, here's something powerful right here about the, about the, the walk as a, as a believer. You see, each and every single one of us are three parts. We are spirit, we are soul, and we are body. Now, when we are born again, our spirits, who are the real us, this is, this is the moment where we're getting a little deep into the ocean here. Our spirits, who are the real us, are the parts to which, you know, Scripture talks about being the new creation in Christ, the new person, the old thing, all things are new. You know, the old has passed away. Behold, all things are brand new. That's my King James language because I, I like reading from the King James. I, I, got the, I got used to the these and the thous and stuff. So, so our spirits are the born again part. See, yes, thank you. Um, if everyone can focus on my foot for the moment. Does everyone see my foot here? Can you see? Can you see? Oh, thank you. Someone said nice shoes. Thank you. Yes. So, okay. So, I want you to picture something here. So, pretend with me that my shoe is my body. Now, I'm wearing a sock as well. Praise God. That um, my sock is my soul. The foot is the spirit. Now, I don't know if you've ever had a time where your, your, your socks, if you've never put your socks on properly, and then it just, when you put it into the shoe, it just, it just makes it feel a bit uncomfortable and everything like that. You know, you see, you see, this is, this is a picture of spirit, soul, and body. See, your foot being the spirit is the real man, the real person. And the soul stays to the shape of the spirit. But sometimes, because of the way the external life can be, it can be a bit like, your soul can be a little bit like an uncomfortable sock inside this body. And sometimes this body has its own little desires and stuff like that. And so the walk feels so complicated sometimes. Like you want to do the right thing. Sounds like scripture. I want to do the right thing, but for some reason I'm doing the wrong thing. And then, so, you know, what's going on? And, you know, am I confused here? What's going on? Well, you see, the, the wonderful thing is that God doesn't just leave us, you know, out in the cold and just say, well, figure it all out for yourself. He doesn't do that. He shows us the way in which we are to do it. And so it says here from the scripture that he who calls us is faithful and he will surely do it. In other words, he will not leave us alone. He will help us to walk out this life. And one of the most important things about walking this life is that Christ has done all the things that uh, we need to walk this wonderful, godly life. But he pleads with us, an urgent plea, that he asks us to not just present our bodies as that living sacrifice, but he goes back, and I'm going to go back to Romans chapter 12. He goes back to Romans chapter 12, and he goes on to say, do not be conformed to this world. That word conformed, it's a picture of being molded and shaped to whatever the world wants you to be. But it, it literally is this picture of standing beside someone and whatever they do, you do the same thing. And see, this is the picture of what the world gets 
will try and get you to do. The world will try and form and shape you and get you to do whatever they want you to do and make it normal. And that's the, and that's the, the part where things can get tricky because when you're dealing with norms, we're dealing with things which are comfortable. We're dealing with things where, you know, we just, this is how we just want to live everyday life. And so, you know, we wake up in the morning, we, we can turn on the TV or look at our phones straight away. Some of us are, are glued to whatever the news is saying and, and, and majority of the time the news is, is pretty much distressing and, and pretty much bad news. I was talking about this with my wife the other day that I remember, I remember back in the day, there used to be a, um, a like at the nine o'clock or 10 o'clock news, there used to be a, an and finding stories they used to do. And, you know, it'd be some good news. You know, nowadays they don't even bother doing that. <laughs> Every, everything's so bad, it's like, okay, yeah, well, the world, half the world is burning. Well, good night. <laughs> huh? Huh? What? <laughs> but this is shaping, molding and shaping us. But God is saying, do not be conformed. Do not be shaped. Do not allow the world and its cultures and its traditions, cultures and traditions of men, not of cultures and traditions of the Lord, which Jesus says, your traditions of man makes the word of God ineffective. That's a powerful thing. So these are the type of things we need to put aside. And so it says, be not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Now here's where we get into the good part. See, the word transformed there um, is where we get our, the word metamorphosis. And that has to do, if you know anything about that, pro that process, especially with like insects and specifically caterpillars and how they turn into, go into cocoons and turn into butterflies. Now, when you see that, you you see this wonderful fluttering butterfly and then you see what it came from. And you're thinking, wow, that's a drastic change. And you see, that's the amazing thing about the renewing of our minds. See, there's a reason why I mentioned the whole thing about the extreme makeover. See, the word renewing comes from the word to renovate. Now, renovation is drastic change. Renovation means that this room here, going from this wonderful sanctuary like this house set up, the renovation of this could mean that it could be a department store, you know, or in a person's house, you know, it could go from a bedroom to becoming a bathroom. You know, this is, this is drastic change. This is change which is unrecognizable. See, that's what renovation is talking about in regards to our minds here. Drastic change. It's a powerful thing here. See, what am I saying here when I, when I talk about the renovation, the renewing, the renovation of our minds here? Well, the key word there is also the mind. See, renewing the mind does not just mean to have, you know, the word of God in your head. It's not just to have, you know, encouraging and spiritual thoughts in your head. Renewing of the mind, the word there for mind means meaning and purpose. 
You see, what is very important for us to understand is that we all have our own perceptions, perspective, ideologies, opinions. And a lot of those things can be conformed by the way we've grown up, the views of others, traditions, and cultures and lives. Now, all of these things are the root of where the mind truly sits. This is very important here. You see, this is where the renovation takes place. You see, these things shape what we believe. These things shape how we think. And so sometimes when we think about what we are thinking about, sometimes we can realize that what we're thinking about doesn't always line up with what the will of God is. No, but I'm, you know, I'm thinking about Scripture, I'm meditating on Scripture. Key point here. Renovation is not decoration. Something's very important here. Renovation is not decoration. You see, many of us, we're not allowing the word of God to renovate our minds. We're clearly just letting it be decorated. And it's very key because once we realize the things in which we have our faith plugged into, once we realize those things which are not according to what the will of God says, that's in the moments, that's those moments where we need to unplug. You see, this is, the, this is the major reason why the Word of God is there to shape our perspectives. See, sometimes, you know, you can, it, this can be challenging. And it takes courage and it takes boldness. And it takes a lot of alertness to be able to do this. See, but I, I want us to realize that within all of this process, we are not alone. Why? Because the Spirit of God lives on the inside of us. And he is the one that gives us the faith, the courage, and the boldness to step out and to walk in his will. See, there's a pathway. There's a pathway that the Lord has set for us. And it's a unique path. It's a path that is unlike anything. And it's us following the Lord Jesus with our eyes fixed on the management and following him and focusing on what he wants us to say, what he wants us to do, to challenge the social norms, to challenge the perspectives of what society says, to put aside things of what possibly our cultures may say, to stand firm and bold for the one who died on the cross for us. If anyone has ever seen the passion of the Christ, you have to understand that this is something that he's done for each and every single one of us. 
not for us to feel bad and feel guilty, but to realize the love and the passion that he has for us. And because of that, I choose to put aside my my social structures, my cultural structures. You know, traditions are a weird thing. You know, there's, there's a, we said this story before, but there's this story of a, of a little girl who um, was watching, watching her, her parent just um, cook something. And um, the parent just has this big roast, I'm talking about food. The parent has this big roast, cuts it in half, and then puts it in the oven and starts to cook it. And so the child says, well, why do, why do you do that? Put the whole thing in. Why did you do that? He says, oh, well, that's, that's, that's how my, my mom does it. That's how my mom cooks it. And so, okay, I'm going to call grandma and ask her well, why. Okay, so she, she calls grandma and says, okay, so grandma, why, why do we get a big, you know, roast here and then cut it in half. And she says, oh, honey, I do that because my oven is too small. (laughs) Tradition. Culture. All these things. We've had friends, my wife and I have had friends that um, uh, who were told when they were younger to, uh, when they see people like uh, myself and my wife, to walk across the road. And um, when you see people like that, and, you know. And these types of things, you know, um, she, our friend was challenged by it. And, you know, getting to know us and everything, and they were like, so you are just like normal people. (laughs) But she she had to find out, you know, what is the roots of all these kinds of things, you know? And so we have to be, find out these things and uproot these things, because these are not of God. These are not of Jesus. It's where the traditions of man make the word of God of no effect. Time for us to renovate an extreme makeover. But this is in all areas of our lives. Why? Because when we do walk in the good an acceptable and perfect will of God. Not only do our lives get transformed, but the lives around us get transformed. And as it says, as it's been said many a time, the Jesus that we represent and we demonstrate might be the only Jesus that somebody else can see. Transformation, and all of it comes through the renewing of our minds, renewing of our perspectives, renewing of our perceptions. And when we have these things, you know, this wonderful grace and peace in our life. And you know, close on this. Where are the areas of your life where you just see, you're just decorating your life? You, you, know, you know a bit of the word of God, but is it transforming your life? And when I say that, renewing 
ultimately starts when we're practicing what we believe. I can go outside to my car with my keys, jump on top of my car, and say, this is my keys. This is my faith. This is what I believe. And I believe that if I use these keys to start the car, I will be able to drive in my car. I believe it. There's no fault in my belief. I believe it with all my heart. Mm. And I will be there for eternity unless I get off the roof of my car like a sane person. Let me, let me not judge what is sane. Is. Get into my car start the car up and start driving. Just believing it is not enough. You have to act on what you believe. And that is our faith in Christ. So with this, can we all stand to our feet?